If you're anything like me, Dream is probably a creator who's caused you a lot of confusion over the years. Because a Minecraft dude that wears a mask and barely uploads should hardly be as controversial as he is. I mean, in response to him just showing his face, he's ugly was a top trending phrase on Twitter. Not to mention that many labels seem to be broadly applied to Dream that insinuate a very sinister background. Yet no one ever explains what happened to justify this reputation. But apparently it involves the blue cat guy from Cartoon Network? Either way, I wanted to make sense of it and apparently so did everyone else. And while I went into this with low expectations, it turns out that there is a lot to Dream's history. So let's dive in. Clay, aka Dream, is a Minecraft YouTuber that quickly skyrocketed to mainstream success due to his skill at the game and innovation in the genre. And as he rose to success, he began to build intrigue due to the fact that he refused to show his face, but okay, he's good at a video game. Where does this turn into controversy? The first major claim often made about Dream is that he has a history of acting inappropriately with minors. Little on the nose for a Minecraft creator, but what do I mean? Well, for starters, Dream faced accusations last year of grooming a 17-year-old when he was 20, and this incident is largely what has led to people calling him a childliker. And I'm going to get into it properly, but off the bat, that feels like we are heavily diluting a phrase that is often tied to severe trauma for children, but what exactly happened? Well, to give you one example, Twitter threads were released by a young girl by the name of Anastasia, who showcased various instances of her and Dream interacting in a particularly friendly way. In fact, Anastasia went so far as to suggest that Dream only did his face reveal because she already had a photo of it and Dream didn't want her to leak it. Now, Dream initially responded to this by saying that the DMs in question most likely were real, but the accusations attached to them, not so much. See, he released a twit longer thread where he states that she was 18 when they had spoken, and this was stated both privately and publicly. Dream also says that real DMs that were simply friendly in nature were also presented with falsified messages that had a far more inappropriate tone in order to paint a false narrative of their interactions. So Dream Show's discuss at the implication that this was in any way grooming, both in terms of what the word suggests about him, but also how it diminishes the word for real victims. He also talks about how these kinds of consequences for him interacting with anyone as a public figure is exhausting, and he would be minimizing his interactions with fans going forward. And other than Anastasia releasing DMs that allegedly show her telling Dream that she was about to turn 18, and her saying that the interactions were inappropriate regardless of age due to the power imbalances of an influencer and fan, not much really came from this. And the biggest outcry to stem from that situation since was Clay wearing an I Love Miners Minecraft t-shirt, which was ultimately seen as tongue-in-cheek humor by Clay, but rubbed many online the wrong way. But see, this is the start of a very common trend with Dream, where accusations are made, but the evidence is always some weird thing that could easily be falsified, and even likely are, yet they end up being taken as fact. Like, with how much the internet will tell you that Dream has been proven to be XYZ, it's kind of baffling that out of the dozens and dozens of tweets and more that I've gone through, there is not a single piece of evidence that I as a video editor could not easily forge, in some cases better than the evidence actually was. But that's the problem. A trend I've noticed is that those who don't actively watch Dream tend to just roll with the accusations as factual or damaging, but his viewers and other creators never really turn on him because they don't end up looking like anything more than a smear campaign. And while these accusations of Dream's interactions with minors are the primary accusations that follow him to this day, it's worth quickly mentioning his other conscious controversies before going into how this situation recently escalated, or more specifically, what other labels have been broadly applied to Dream. The first is, well, a cheater. See, Dream had faced accusations for cheating during a Minecraft speedrun, which sounds mild, but a public figure doing something like that can quickly become a huge scandal in the speedrunning and gaming communities. These allegations were based on Dream having, frankly, unbelievable luck during a run. So Dream hired an astrophysicist, allegedly from Yale, just to release a study to suggest that Dream's speedrun, while improbable, was perfectly legit. Then Dream just announced that he accidentally had a mod installed that alters probability that he uses for his entertainment-based series and he didn't realize it was on during the run. And regardless of if you believe that story, it soured a lot of people's perception of Clay overall. I mean, you have possible intentional cheating by someone who didn't need the attention or clout. And even going out of his way to hire an astrophysicist just to say he's right, you could argue it's a little much. And then the whole thing being chalked up to an accident after six months. It's a weird look, though Clay has since stepped away from speedrunning and has removed his other records as a show of good faith. Also, Dream is often given the label of a racist, which is based on Dream venting that his music gets clowned on while trying to be authentic, while music that has less of a great message is often celebrated. And then some took that tweet to be a shot at black people, so then Dream said he shouldn't have made that tweet since it's harmful to the 
black community, but then that got him backlash because now it was dream equating drugs to black people, so whoever didn't think it was meant to be that began to question that. Yeah, it's really weird, but when people call him racist, that's largely why. Do with that what you will. And from all this, you can see that Dream is just kind of a weird guy. Like, to me, he seems very sensitive to criticisms that he feel are unwarranted. And often, his responses to these criticisms end up making him look weirder than the initial questionable action. Which makes sense when you consider how young he is and how young he was when getting his start. Like, he kind of reminds me of PewDiePie. Where to me, it feels like this is someone who is just not the right person to handle a platform of this size. Which, to be fair, most people aren't. There are very few people like Retin Link or Markiplier who can handle the sudden celebrity status, or Jaden who seems to mostly just ignore it. But yeah, Dream isn't exactly great in a crisis. In fact, when his most recent controversy kicked off, Dream reacted in such a defensive way that even quite stepped in with the advice to basically shut the hell up and just release one statement putting this matter to rest because each outburst is only hurting him. See, this is significant as quite himself faced accusations this year of essay and transphobia, but was able to clear his name in the public eye by disappearing for an extended period and releasing a response so thorough it cleared him of any wrongdoing. But what exactly had Dream so worked up? Well, like I said, it's the blue cat guy from Cartoon Network. That wasn't a joke. See, Nicholas Cantu is one of the actors who was voiced the titular character from The Amazing World of Gumball. And one day, Nicholas responded to a Dream parody account thinking it was really Clay, saying he wanted Dream to stop living. Now, the confusion is understandable because at Dream was Talon with a verification button looks pretty real. Thanks for that, Twitter. I was only confused about it for like 20 minutes. But Nicholas ended up calling Dream a child liker, which caused the real Dream to step in and accuse Nicholas of terrible behavior, including assault, use of slurs, berating an Uber driver, and so on. And before this was recently reignited, Nicholas had actually apologized to Dream in DMs for his actions on the night in question. And since, Nicholas has confirmed parts of this but not others, and well, they don't like each other. But this all resulted in Dream posting a video of Nicholas on the night in question, clearly under the influence. Right, so you understand what somebody's f***ing No, you're, you're not retarded. Okay. No, oh, you are. He's telling you, he's telling you. So I want to tell you right now, you are Australopithecus Cro-Magnon rock stupid. You're retarded. You're f***ing down syndrome. I don't give a f You do not understand that your literacy level needs to be brought up in the f***ing Mariana Trench and you have a f***ing issue with your intelligence. Damn, I just heard what you said. You probably are extremely drunk, or no, I'm not you're like drunk. this. If you're actually not, I am like this because uh, ADHD, autism, neurodivergent. I have ADHD as well. Right, but because you said that's what the mask is, I think you're a f Alright, so that's why. And while Clay released these videos to clear his name, it kind of did the opposite, where people were quick to accuse him of recording blackmail of a drunk person under the legal drinking age because Nicholas was actually 20 in the video, which led to people also saying that Dream was providing him with the alcohol and then blackmailing him, which isn't a great accusation given the fact that Dream has a history of accusations with acting inappropriately with people for their age. Though, Clay clarified that he had just met Nicholas that night, believed he was of age due to a fake ID, didn't provide him with the alcohol in question and wasn't the one to take the video. A video that was taken because Nicholas asked the person to record. But yeah, you can end the video now. Thanks for watching. Um, Cantu Network on all socials. Doing your sets. Please do my channel. Though, of course, none of this stops people from echoing those original accusations, but whatever. They also had people that were celebrating Nicholas's behavior just to spite Dream, which, yeah, isn't weird at all. Now, the situation is already pretty weird, right? So you might expect this to stop escalating. Well, we're not done, and that's because of a Twitter account that's going to come up quite a bit when talking about Dream, Burner22. See, they're an anonymous account that has been focused on trying to take down Dream by exposing him once and for all. This included them posting some videos allegedly from Dream of him moaning for some minors he was talking to. But like, the video quality is insanely low. It's weirdly a low-res screen recording of a phone when screen recording software is now native to smartphones. And the video that shows the snap being open doesn't show anyone touching the phone or screen in question. Which means, at best, this is a low-quality phone recording of a screen recording, which would make no sense unless you were trying to hide the editing behind the low quality. I don't know. Even creators like Moist Critical, who generally stick to safer opinions, were expressing doubt at the validity of these videos. This is allegedly Dream Snapchat account, but there's nothing actually connecting this account to those videos whatsoever. You can easily just make a fake Dream Dream Snapchat account. There's nothing in those videos that has his face or anything. These videos just aren't definitive proof of anything. It's a black screen with the sound of somebody moaning. Now that's not to say that this can't be real. It could be Dream. 
dream. I have no way of knowing for sure one way or the other. It's just right now with what is presented, it's not enough to convince me beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is dream here. Anyone could be moaning there and just say, look, it's Dream, listen, it's definitely him, but it's just a complete random person doing it. And this week, Dream finally released his response to all of this, a response that is actually almost an hour and a half long. But before getting into that, there's one really important thing that I want to make note of. A lot of the situation is based on the word of various anonymous accounts. And by and large, it reminds me of the Boy in the Band situation from last year, where an anonymous letter was posted making a bunch of accusations. And while certain things were proven to be true, by myself and others, such as him dating a teenager years ago while he was in his 20s and asking his fans if he should abuse his meds, most of the actual accusations are completely unsubstantiated and are entirely based on messages that can easily be forged. Yet you had people immediately stating that they were factually true and were applying labels to Boy a Ben that really should not have been used as definitive labels. Because the internet tends to prioritize the accountability part of a controversy, but then forego the actual evidence part. Now that's not me giving any opinion on Dream's innocence, but rather, I'm reminding you that seeing a TikTok with a million views calling someone a name does not mean it is factually true, and it sucks seeing that kind of thing still be seen as okay as long as the person's cringy. And Dream actually forged DMs in his videos specifically to demonstrate that it's very easy to do, but now people are taking those out of context to criticize him for faking DMs when he was never trying to present them as real. So specifically when it comes to Dream, it is very hard to know if people criticizing him are doing so because they have a compelling argument that he's guilty or if they just don't like him. So I'll do my best to make sense of that when needed. Anyway, Dream released a video that is meant to address all of the controversies that he's faced to date. And while the like to dislike ratio isn't particularly great, the reception from creators has been pretty positive, including ones that are typically known for being critical of other creators like Mudahar and Dark Viper AU. Now, right away, Dream sets the tone for how serious he's taking this and that he plans on fully defending himself. In this video, I'm going to be very vulnerable, open, and honest. I go into my past, I go into controversies, and I also debunk very serious lies about me, including by involving the police, legal teams, and extensive research. It will get uncomfortable. I will get into details of my life that you probably don't want to hear and I don't particularly want to share either, but it feels necessary given the circumstances. And I just want to right off the bat state as clearly as I can that these allegations are not true. I plan on going to extreme detail to prove that in this video. And to all the people that are spreading lies, fabricating stories, and making false accusations for fun or because they think it's funny. But I don't care. I've accepted I'm a horrible person. This is not funny. This is not a joke. This is people's lives ranging from my own, my family, my employees, to actual victims that stories won't be heard or believed in the future because of this. Now, while it's a little weird that he went with such a stylized approach to the editing, making heavy use of animations and cutesy effects and music, his actual words do make his intention very clear. And at first, he addresses some of the more minor controversies he's faced, because like I said, he's trying to debunk everything. This included him lying about a leaked photo of him due to privacy concerns that culminated in him and his family regularly being swatted. Otherwise, I want to start with the biggest lie I have ever told. The face leak photo was me. Obviously, I said many times that it wasn't, and a lot of people have and still do use that against me to say that I'm dishonest. But the reason I lied about that is because of the face reveal. I'd been planning the face reveal for years. I sacrificed so much by staying inside and avoiding cameras for so long. I mean, I had covers on all my windows, and even to go to the dentist, I left hiding in the back of a car and went to a different state. Yes, I was paranoid. The day the face leak was posted, I was playing a Minecraft tournament, and someone called the SWAT team on me. I was put in handcuffs on my front lawn with cops with rifles pointing at me, and I was pretty much swatted from that day on almost daily, to the point where the reason Sapnet moved in with me before my face reveal was to answer the door when police showed up. Because people started camping outside with cameras to try and reveal my face, and I needed someone else to answer the door. When the people that were doxing me thought that they had the wrong address, my family ended up getting swatted. And my mom answered the door thinking that it was pizza for her and my little sister. They were held at gunpoint with police helicopters circling the neighborhood. As well as the speedrunning scandal and a controversy involving a childhood friend of his being accused of domestic violence. But here's his short conclusion that backs up what I'm saying from after his thorough investigation. It is definitely more likely likely that he really didn't know his drop rates and barter rates were modified. Was it intentional? And I do believe that it probably wasn't. I'm still fully responsible for my behavior back then towards the moderators, regardless of my intentions, and I did act like a little baby and caused the majority of the problems myself, so I'm sorry. Whenever the thread first came out saying that Manatree abused his
introduced his girlfriend. I responded emotionally, calling people gullible, because I didn't believe that someone I had known for so long and grew up with could do anything like that. And at the time, although no one knew, he lived with me in Sapnet, so it seemed crazy that he could somehow hide it from us. I jumped to the gun and reacted emotionally. Only later did I properly look into everything, and I apologize. The person that I knew was kind, generous, and compassionate, and I never would have added him to the server if I thought he was anything otherwise. But what I do know is that, other than my initial crude response, I stand by my actions. I think that I navigated a really complex situation the best that I could. I got rid of any risk, supported a victim, made it clear that I didn't support domestic violence, even to the detriment of one of my oldest friendships. The one of the accusations that I did find interesting was one that was echoed by Charlie, aka Moist Critical, who accused Dream of posting content that is creepy given the age of his viewers. Dream's audience has always been on the younger side of things, and yet Dream constantly engages with them in very inappropriate ways, such as like posting thirst traps, some of the things he says, like all of that very public and very well documented. I think all of it's very creepy, and I've said that quite a bit in the past. So I think with his history of doing things like that, it makes a lot of the claims have a lot more weight to them because they're much more believable knowing that Dream publicly does encourage his fans to be parasocial. He does post thirst traps, even knowing that his fans are children, which I personally believe is a creepy thing to do with the audience he has. And this is kind of an example of what I was talking about, where very vague things from Dream are turned into something with sinister implications. And in my opinion, Dream actually debunks this rather well, because the pictures in question were just normal selfies, and when suggestive and creepy captions were being made to turn them into thirst traps, it was by that parody account I mentioned before, the one that Nicholas Cantu thought was real because it looked very real. These are just completely normal photos I posted of myself with no caption, but they repost them and put a weird caption. This has fooled tons of people, including people that have made pretty big videos about me, and I wouldn't be surprised at all if Charlie saw this account a couple times and thought its tweets were mine. But Dream goes even further by saying that his audience is mostly college-aged men, it's just that younger fans are the ones that tend to engage with him more off YouTube. Which makes sense, children tend to be more passionate about creators than people who have to pay taxes. Dream then states that this is largely part of a double standard he faces where, no matter what, people will just attach the worst intentions to his actions to justify their hate of him. But if I posted photos like these, which to be clear, if I was ripped as hell like Charlie, I would 100%, it would be made out to be predatory because it's me when it's not at all. And that same standard isn't applied to TikTok stars or really anyone else but me, just because I'm the Minecraft guy. A lot of the photos me and Charlie have posted are actually really similar. It's just people cherry picking goofy photos of mine and then making them out to be weird. When it's just me posting random photos, because that's literally part of our job. Which reminds me a lot of what Quite shared when talking about his accusations earlier this year. In fact, Orion describes our dynamic overall in a way where no matter what I did, it was always in order to get something I wanted out of Orion. But here it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't. When I wasn't speaking with or replying to Orion, it means I was playing on off his abandonment issues. But when I saw him in what seemed like severe distress and dropped whatever I was doing to try and support him, then I'm manipulating Orion by only being there for him at his worst. And trying to counter his negative self-talk is now love bombing, praise that I'd only lather on when I wanted something from Orion. On the whole, it didn't matter if I was present or not. In hindsight for Orion, there was nothing I did right in any situation. Because unfortunately, when someone's actions aren't enough to prove that they're bad, people are quick to attach intentions that they cannot possibly know. Though to try and clear his name of all this, Dream Post a compilation of every photo that he's ever posted of himself online to show that none have been inappropriate. But enough of the more minor accusations, what about the ones involving teenagers? Well, I do think that on the whole, Dream does a pretty good job of explaining his innocence. But with the specific claims from Anastasia, he kind of goes over it very quickly, by pointing out that the most that was released from her and has been verified were some friendly Twitter DMs that include her saying she's 18 and later contradicting that, but nothing explicitly inappropriate. I didn't have any inappropriate contact with this person. I didn't have any sexual contact with this person. I hardly even remember who this person is at all. And the only messages I could even find with this person were friendly Twitter DMs. And even in those Twitter DMs, I mentioned that they had 18 in their bio, which they contradict. And pointing out that him face revealing to her wouldn't make much sense, as even his friends were unsure what he looked like until his public face reveal, making it questionable that he would reveal it to a random teenager online. I definitely didn't face reveal to them. That's an obvious lie. Almost nobody knew what I looked like at all before my face reveal. Not even most of my best friends that had known me my entire life 
let alone someone I don't even remember talking to at all. And that's something I want to point out because Dream does this a lot during his video, where he basically makes very strong statements that these accusers can easily disprove at any time if they have the evidence that they claim to, yet he is that sure that they can't. Like if Anastasia were to post a photo of Clay that hasn't been posted online yet, then there goes Dream's entire defense. So to put it mildly, he's very confident. There's also the fact that she used a screenshot of TikTok saying that Dream's account was in her contacts to suggest she had his private number, but apparently this is impossible, as the TikTok account in question is registered to a Google Voice account that Dream doesn't use for texting people. That is really all he says there, he mostly just kind of assumes that it has already been established that she was lying, and therefore Dream doesn't need to spend much time on this. The first allegation made against me was pretty quickly discarded, and again, she never claimed any sexual misconduct, she never claimed anything related to nudity or sexting. This was also in early 2020, and she had 18 in her bio. With everything and all the inconsistencies, wasn't taken that seriously. But it's still worth noting, because people still somehow say this is one of three victims of mine. However, Dream goes into much more detail while discussing the second accuser, Amanda, who shared a similar story. And on the whole, I would say that Dream does a really good job of heavily discrediting Amanda's story. For starters, he released a transcript of the DMs between them on Instagram, with the only omitted messages being ones she deleted on her end. And generally, they are pretty standard. She consistently initiates their interactions, and he typically gives dry or uninterested responses, at times taking days to reply. So according to the timeline Amanda gave, they would had to have gone from this tone to sexting almost overnight. You may be wondering at this point, why are you replying to her? You seem clearly disinterested. You're taking days or weeks to reply, and then when you do reply, it's very dry. Well, Instagram has a really stupid feature that makes it so that once you've replied to someone's DMs once, you can't remove their ability to personally message you, unless you block them. So even if we say that it started a couple weeks before it stopped, you'd have to believe that every message you've just seen, we went from that to sexting days later in 2022 before my face reveal. But even more, Amanda seemed to do a complete 180 in regards to Dream, engaging with him very positively within just days of her accusations. She tweeted out defending me from hate on my face reveal 10 days before the allegation and was liking my tweets, including a subscriber milestone tweet two days before she tweeted her allegations. Which yeah, doesn't necessarily prove beyond a doubt that nothing harmful could have happened, but then you're talking about a teenager being able to process that they were abused and go public with it within days, and it just so happened to coincide with when Dream was receiving the most hate due to his face reveal. It's just weird. She also says that she was going to release proof of all of these claims, but she never did. But it's still extremely weird that she was asked for these logs many times, it takes five minutes to download, and she never did it probably because it doesn't support what she was saying. She also said that she was gonna lie and tell me that she was 18, but that she changed her mind, I guess. So I was going to lie and tell him I was 18. She said she would provide proof of the fact that she told me she was 17 and that I still sexed her tomorrow. But I didn't, and that proof will come out tomorrow. And guess what? She never posted proof because this never happened. She tweeted out thanking people for all the support and claimed at the end that I deleted our DMs right as she tweeted this and specifically said my end too, which means her DMs too. Well, I just want to point out that this is impossible. There's not a single mainstream social media platform that lets you delete both people's messages. And Dream makes a fair point that since she provided no evidence for him to disprove, it's much harder to prove that something didn't happen. Now, unfortunately, because she didn't provide any proof of these things, it's difficult to be specific about some of the things she claimed. It's much easier to completely make up that something happened than it is to prove that it never did. Like if I said right now, prove to me 100% that you never sexted a specific person that you've had on Snapchat at any point, it would be impossible to do. But what I can do is lay out all the inconsistencies, talk about the proven lies, the specifics, point out questions that were never asked, and provide all of the evidence that I have. And I believe that luckily, that's way more than enough. And Dream ultimately provides his theory on what happened. With the timing of the face reveal and her allegation, my belief is that there was a lot of hate and that it's easy to get spiteful and join in on a hate train. I had ignored multiple of her Instagram DMs and Snapchat messages in recent months, and I had also made a new Snapchat that I didn't add her on. I still used my old Snapchat occasionally, but I just rarely responded. That's my only real explanation for why she flipped so quickly from being publicly positive to me to lying about me, but I guess I'll never really know. While also pleading with Amanda to stop what she's doing. Amanda, you are hurting actual victims. You are diminishing the very real trauma that victims of grooming and abuse have gone through. You are making it harder for real victims of abuse to come forward. You are not a victim. You are not doing a good thing. No matter how terrible you think I am or that the ends justify the means, you are hurting victims. Just in case this video isn't enough for you to realize that, check your mailbox. And the last accuser is one by the name of Jamie. 
though that's actually not true. That's the last person that Dream received allegations in reference to, but she never made any claims herself. See, Jamie was someone that Dream met before he blew up, and the accusations were being pushed by the Twitter account I mentioned before, Burner22. Now this is all in reference to the videos of Dream allegedly moaning and sending that to minors, but again, the video was very suspicious at best, with the video being open despite no one actually interacting with the phone. And that's just one small way that Dream establishes that this Burner account is unreliable at best. Now, if you're a little confused, I am too. This is a Burner account making up things, their story makes no sense. Okay, so let's just summarize this. This allegation is not from a victim. It is from an anonymous Twitter account that was made the same day as the allegation. This anonymous person claims that I groomed a girl named Jamie. They did not ever contact Jamie. They did not know Jamie. They got none of their information from Jamie. They even incorrectly said that she quit the internet years ago when she's still active to this day. They posted videos claiming to be from me to a minor. They never showed proof that it was from me or my Snapchat profile. They never showed proof of who it was to. They cropped contacts from screenshots, lied publicly and said I admitted the videos were from me. They falsely alluded to the fact that the victim gave them permission and ended up causing massive harassment and terror to Jamie, who they said was a victim of mine. The person in the screenshots claims that I'm not a groomer, that they're extremely out of context and that the burner doesn't even know what was being discussed and that now their personal life is being dug into due to an anonymous burner account. On top of that, no one even taps to open the Snapchat. There's no finger. You can't open snaps with a button, but it doesn't even matter because you can see that no buttons were pressed. So how did it open? Nobody touches the screen. You can't open a Snapchat without tapping the button to open it. So ignoring the fact that there's no proof it's even me, how is this video even real? How did it open? The video doesn't even make sense. People have also pointed out that frames are missing and that the normal Snapchat animation doesn't play at all. But despite all of that, hardly anyone asked any questions. If you replied asking any questions, you got called a groomer supporter. See, Burner has a habit of stating that they have proof with such conviction, yet never actually providing it and backpedaling when things hit the fan. For example, they expressed in their bio a willingness to volunteer their name in order to let Clay sue them because Burner's evidence was just that airtight. But now that's gone. And Dream even released a statement from Jamie that states that she had nothing to do with these accusations and wanted this all to stop. My name is Jamie. I want to make it very clear that I was never groomed. I definitely am not a victim of dream. I don't know how or why people are using my name and information without having ever asked me if any of it's true. Everything claiming to be about me was posted without my consent. Leave me alone. I want nothing to do with this. I have been getting harassed by people, either saying I'm looking for attention or digging through my life trying to confirm things I want nothing to do with. Leave me alone. Clay also had the person who was running his Snapchat and fan art accounts speak to their perspective that not only did Clay not do anything inappropriate with these accounts, but he was barely using them himself. Hi, so I've ran Dream's public Snapchat since January 2022. There's nothing weird and he doesn't really even log into it. Um, I also run his fan art account and have been since January 2022 as well. I'm good friends with Dream and the Dream team, so he thought I'd be a good pick to run it. I mostly just like and retweet art. I'm banished from replying. Sometimes people will call him creepy for stupid stuff that I've liked, and I've never really taken it seriously because I just think what's being depicted in the art is funny to me. But even with Jamie, there's been an ongoing document attempting to prove that Dream is an abuser. And the author of this document has been basically stalking Jamie in order to dig further into her apparent story. And this has been endorsed to Burner 2 too, but I'll get to that. And across these accusations of legal behavior from Dream, there are a lot of common behaviors that make them seem even less legitimate, such as multiple people stating that they have gone to police and filed a report, which of course is a very easy way to gain validity. But Dream actually shared that his legal team checked all of the possible precincts and not a single report or lawsuit has been filed against him. She then tweeted a picture of the inside of a police station and also said she'll come back with more evidence, to be patient, that it's a process, and that it could be days. And after a lot of digging, my legal team was able to track down exactly where this picture is from based on the colors of the walls, the cameras, and a plaque outside the door. Then had someone go to the police station and requested specific records from this specific police station and checked every record they could, criminal and civil. I didn't find anything under either one of those names. And there was no information at all. I was not even in their system. They even reached out to the Orange County Police, my local police. They put it in writing, put their name on it, and solidified that their claims are correct. Thank you for calling the Orange County Sheriff's Office. To continue in English, press 1. Nothing. No interaction. I did last name, first name, first name, last name. Nothing. Zero. Nada. So no, there's, there's nothing. No, no, like, no reports been made. Reports, anything? 
Nothing. Your name has nothing next to it. And not that taking legal action as an anonymous source would prove anything. But just to be clear, I have searched far and wide, sent open access requests to police departments. So you're not listed in my system at all. And all police records are public in Florida, where I live. Not a single person has filed anything against me. Anything. Even though every claimant has claimed that they have. Again, not that it would prove anything if they did, it would be disproved in court, but not a single person did. I also don't have any civil cases brought against me, meaning no one has officially accused me of anything from anywhere, despite, again, every single person claiming they have. This is public record. And Dream even has a law enforcement representative state that Burner's actions constitute slander and harassment. So right. you would like to make a report and you feel like someone is um, harassing you? All, All right. right, but whoever's telling you that stuff, you may need to file a complaint because that's harassment and that's called slander and you do have civil rights, so you can make a report if you want. There's also the fact that across these accusations against Dream, almost none of them come from first-hand sources. In fact, there's often quite a few degrees of separation, yet they're just treated as fact. Despite the fact that the proof was a video of a video of a video from screenshots of DMs of screenshots of DMs, you have to go four people deep to find anyone that has ever talked to Jamie. I'm not even in any of these screenshots. And the video of the video of the video has like 10 frames where you see the name Dream. Most people spreading this did zero research. Again, it reminds me a lot of Boyne Band, where there are apparently tons of victims, but the only ones to speak out ultimately have nothing. And even more, the word proven is constantly thrown around in regards to these accusations, whether it's because someone has provided proof or is going to, yet no one ever does. And Dream even claims that random photos of him just hanging out in public end up being twisted to make accusations that he's up to no good. But sometimes they didn't even need evidence. Someone tweeted out that I wasn't working on my video, that I was actually actually out meeting a fan I met when they were 16 at a bar and that I got stood up and laughed at by everyone. And this just didn't even happen, but you don't even need any proof. It was Thanksgiving and I was charging my car by my grandparents' house and I went to a non-alcoholic bar and played ping pong and was never stood up by anybody. They can just make up whatever they want and rudely take secret pictures of me and people will believe it. This is crazy stalker behavior. They even said that I was the most ass ping pong player in the place when I was undefeated. They even had to lie and slander my ping pong record. And to really demonstrate how easily one can fabricate evidence, Dream forges DMs from various influencers. Okay, XQC, I know you're probably watching this. I want you to address this. What do you have to say for yourself? It's irrefutable proof. Look, here it is on a second phone. Prove to me you didn't send me this video. <laughs> or you're a pervert forever and everyone watching this will now know it. Or Pokimane, you've been getting some hate for your cookie prices recently, and I don't mean to expose you, but you did say this to me, and I think that's disgusting. What do you have to say for yourself? What more proof do you need? I also have the cookies she sent me, and a signed note from her. This is irrefutable evidence. You get the point. I made all of those pieces of evidence in 10 minutes with only free programs. And like clockwork, people ended up sharing these messages around, claiming that Dream was making fake messages of people when the entire point was that he's faking them and he clearly discloses them. Which again, just lends a lot of credibility to the idea that people will echo anything that's said about Dream just because he's cringe, regardless of if it's true. But remember that document I had mentioned? It has some insinuating that it is so damning to Dream that it has him down to rights. Which having actually gone through it, I don't understand how that could be your take at all. Like, it's mostly just 28 plus pages of saying information and then assuming that information equates to evidence, which is obviously not true. Like, there is a lot of information about Jamie gone into, but again, none of that really matters if Jamie is outright saying nothing happened, leave me alone. Like, it's really weird that she clearly wants no part in this, yet the people apparently trying to advocate for her are saying, your story is getting told regardless of if it's true and if you want it out there. It's really weird. Like, Burner and Dream Scraper, the one behind the 24 page document, so much of their behavior just feels like an attempt to overwhelm people with information that is barely relevant so that you just assume they know what they're talking about and thus must be right. Then they don't say anything but talk about having proved themselves beyond a doubt. In fact, here's a TikTok with over 300,000 likes of someone quite literally saying, Oh, for there to be a 24 page document, it's enough for me to believe that Dream is done. Bruh, what the f is going on? We got a random fucking burner account here, boys, who just posted undeniable evidence that Dream Snapchat account was involved in sending sexual messages to minors. Messages and noises. 
Buddy's been working on a video for months. Meanwhile, this dude's out here cooking him alive. You're done. Look, he's already contacted the Orange County Sheriff's Office and the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children to ensure it's being investigated. It's over. You dream stands are idiots. It's just all really weird. Like if this dude is sending weird stuff to all of these fans, how hard is it to go, here are the photos, this is a statement to go along with it, we have nothing else to say at this time. What's with all the smoke and mirrors? And like, here's the thing, is proof always needed when making accusations of abuse? Not necessarily. But when you have anonymous accounts making a ton of accusations while constantly saying they have proof, yet no substantial proof has ever been provided, what do you expect? Again, it reminds me a lot of Boy in a Band, where the letter was saying that there were dozens of victims, yet the only person who ever spoke out against him was an ex-girlfriend who didn't like that he worked with PewDiePie and felt that her opinion wasn't taken into account. Which is a far cry from what apparently dozens of people experienced. And that letter also claimed to have definitive evidence, but all that was ever released was random messages that are really easy to forge. And I think Dark Viper AU makes a really good point about the situation, where there are so many threads about Dream that either possess evidence that is easy to debunk or are treating said threads as fact. And it makes it so that if anything sinister did happen with Dream, it's most likely being buried by all of this nonsense. Like I have no skin in this game, I have no problem with Dream being proven guilty. But Anastasia claims to have pictures of his face but never releases them. Burner and Amanda claim to have gone to the police, but there's no record of this despite said records being public. One piece of video evidence is released and it's very clearly forged. Also, as of writing this video, Burner's account was suddenly deleted and messages were released by Twitter user Mascara that seemed to show Amanda admitting to lying. Though that should also be taken with a huge grain of salt since, again, messages are very easy to fake. Though just a couple days later, their account is back. And now they're saying that Dream is not taking legal action against them, their source completely lied to them, and they never actually saw any evidence for themselves, but we're stating hearsay as fact. Yeah, it's not like I recently made an hour-long video about why that's bad or anything. Also, as of editing this, Dreamscraper, the one behind the extensive document, they've actually taken it down, saying, this is not due to legal action or anything of the sort. This is due to the irresponsibility of putting together and posting such a document in the first place. Regardless of what we believe, she didn't consent or agree to any of it that matters. And despite everything, people were still insisting that they knew better than Jamie, with Dreamscraper eventually adding, to those saying she's in denial, would posting evidence to millions of people that an event happened really help the ones who lived it? Situations like this are incredibly complex, sensitive, and serious, and should always be handled with the involvement of the alleged victim. I did not speak to Jamie. She has only made one statement on the situation, and it was to leave her alone please respect that. Now, considering these people are dropping like flies, and so far it is not because Dream is using lawyers to silence them, that just leaves him looking even better than he already was. Like, I think where I'm at is that Dream is just kind of a weird dude, which is totally fine. There's nothing wrong with being a little weird. But people are just saying whatever they want, regardless of the truth, because, oh, he's cringe. Which leads to stuff spreading like wildfire on platforms like Twitter and TikTok, where people take this stuff as fact, despite it being far from black and white. Though at least now we know that in order to disprove a 28 page document, all Dream really had to do was post a 30 page document that just says no you over and over again. Because as we've learned, more pages means facts gooder, apparently.